So I prepared a short video here on parallel circuits and what we're doing in this video is we are solving for resistance total or total resistance in a parallel circuit and what you can see up here in the top corner I have the three rules for a parallel circuit. Uh, the first rule being the voltage drop across any branch is equal to the source voltage. So if we come down here to our source and let's just look at this as being 12 volts as our source so we're just coming off of say an automobile battery. If we analyze this circuit and we notice the path here for the electrons to travel you can see that regardless of where I measure voltage from I'm always going to be able to measure back to the source so that means that my, my voltage will be consistent or will be the same throughout the parallel circuit. And that's one very important rule to remember. And as we broaden our experience a little bit with parallel circuits, you'll see how important that is. It also <coughs> makes sense to us as electricians because our world primarily works in the parallel world. If we're working in a home, we know that um, the voltage should be 120 at standard receptacles light bulbs will be 120. Uh, again, in an office building, most of the time the receptacles are 120, so the voltage should always be the same in a parallel circuit. The second rule is the total current is equal to the sum of the branch currents. And again, if we think about that from our, our background and our experience, if, if these resistors right here, if we just think of those as just simple light bulbs, so there's a light bulb, there's a second light bulb. Those are light bulbs and every time we turn the light bulb on we have some current. Now if we add another light bulb, what happens? Our current goes up. We add another light bulb. What happens again? Our current goes up. So every time somebody goes ahead and plugs something in or turns something on, we get an increase in the current level. So the total current is equal to the sum of the total branches. Now the one that is oftentimes the trickiest is the total resistance. And the total resistance is, is much different than in a series circuit because in a parallel circuit, you'll see the electrons have, in this case, two different paths for them to, to travel down. So because of that, the speed of the electrons, or the current, the speed, current, right? The speed of those electrons is going to vary based on the individual branches of the resistance. And then that's going to impact the total resistance as well. And so... Total resistance is the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals of each individual branch. I'm going to show you a formula for that. But there's one other very important way to think about total resistance in a parallel circuit. And that is resistance total is always less than any resistor value. So that's kind of your double check when you're all done and after you've solved these you come back and, and you kind of always double check and make sure is my resistance total is it less than in this case 1k or 20k. Now I brought up the whole 1k down here. We also have to remember what k means. k basically means we're taking the number 1 and we're multiplying it by 1,000. So if we're going to solve for this uh, 1k down here, we have to know that that is equal to 1,000 ohms. And over here at the 20, 20k, it's the same situation. It's 20 times 1,000. So we're looking at 20,000 ohms. 
Now there's two ways we can get resistance total. We can use the reciprocal formula, which I'll show you here in just a second, the reciprocal, or we can do product over sum. Product over sum is kind of handy because a lot of times we're working with just pairs. So product over sum tells us we're going to take R1 and we're going to multiply it by R2. And then we're going to divide it by R1 plus R2. So that's the product over sum. The other reciprocal formula is resistance total is equal to 1 divided by 1 divided by R1 plus 1 divided by R2. And if we had more resistors, we would just simply continue with however many values we would have, and it would be kind of a, a one formula process uh, in working with that reciprocal formula. A disadvantage of the product over sum is we're only doing two resistors at a time, and so once we solve for the first two, then we'd have to use this new value along with, say, the next resistor value in order to continue. Uh, I have a picture here of the calculator that we are using most of the time. And there's a couple of features it's important to talk about for the calculator. Um, when you are going to use the calculator, it's important to understand when to use these parentheses, or some folks call them the brackets. And so if you're going to use a calculator and you're going to use product over sum, be sure and put the top formula or the top equation and the bottom equation in a set of parentheses so that the calculator solves the top value first, then it solves the bottom value, and then it takes those two values and you divide them. That's the last step that the calculator will do. The same is also true for parentheses when you're looking at the product over sum. This bottom portion has to be all in parentheses. And so what the calculator will do is it will do this process and it will add it to this process and add it to this process and then the last thing it does is it divides one by that answer. So again, those parentheses are important. So in conclusion, if I go ahead and enter 1,000 times 20,000 and divide it by 1,000 plus 20,000, I end up with the value of RT is equal to 950, whoops, 52.38 ohms of resistance. Here's a, <clears throat> here's a second parallel circuit I want to work through, and you'll see this one's got, got more resistors in it. So we're looking at four resistors this time. So again, our rules are going to be the same. Voltage will be the same. Total current's going to add. Uh, and the total resistance is the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals of each individual branch. So for this one, this one, because it has four values, it might make some sense for us to use the reciprocal formula. So if we're going to solve for resistance total, we're going to look at the 1 divided by 1 divided by R1 plus 1 divided by R2 plus 1 divided by R3. And again, however many resistors we have, we'll continue with that. So if we're going to actually use our numbers that we have, it would look like this. 1 divided by 1 divided by 500 plus 1 divided by 100 plus 1 divided by 500 
plus 1 divided by 100. And I should have mentioned this sooner, but remember this bottom portion has to be in the parentheses or the brackets for the calculator in order to do that portion of it first. And when we type that all into the calculator, it gives us our resistance total. And that resistance total is 41.6 ohms of resistance. And if you remember from the last picture, I had kind of that last rule I mentioned is resistance total is always less than any branch. So again, we're going to double check and we're going to compare 41.6 is less than 100. That's the smallest value. So we should be in good shape. That answer definitely makes sense.